How do you do everybody? I'm artist Brian Sheffield. It's good to have you with me. And uh, I've had a request or two for a tutorial on one of these sunsets and so we're going to do that today. I'm going to uh, do the whole thing. I'm not going to add any music or anything. I'm not going to speed it up or none of that. I'm going to do the whole thing in regular time so if you don't want to watch an extended video uh, explanation then then you need to I, I might uh, speed it up and uh, do two versions of it one for the tutorial and then one for the people that just want to listen to, just, they just want to relax and have a glass of wine or something or a beer after work and they just want to watch somebody make a piece of art with some music and uh, I'll, so I'll do it both ways anyways we're going to use some less expensive paint and uh, I also use this in my paint. This is a glow medium. And uh, you get maybe a cap full. And you get when you get your paint down to about right here, you put about a cap full down in there. And you shake it up real good. And uh, as you use your paint and you refill it, when, when you go buy new tubes and you squirt in here, you can add some of this glow medium. And it'll make your paint, get, give it a real faint glow, like a glow in the dark effect. And uh, it, it'll look cool under a black light too. Uh, you, you might see me use some thicker paint like this, but it's not necessary that you have it. You don't have to. If all you can afford is these, these, uh, this type of paints, it's fine. And they come in small tubes like this and this. And uh, so you could even do a smaller canvas in this style if you wanted to. It just won't. It won't take you as long. I just like doing bigger canvases. So. And uh, we'll be using a, a number two flat. You can see it's really well used, and I've got a lot of paint on it. I've done quite a few pieces with this brush, and I, I really like the way it works. And it's just a, a regular cheap little house painting brush that you would get something for like cutting in the corners of your walls when you get ready to paint your house. It's no big deal. It's really inexpensive, about two or three dollars. And uh, these are the brushes that cost. This is a medium sized filbert, and. Uh, this is a number 12 flat, and uh, we got a, a script liner, a number one script liner, and uh, I've got a number zero round that I like for uh, scrubbing in detail and real, just real light, a real light line. If I want to do a wider line and I want it to have a more general coverage, I'll use this filbert because you see how the brush kind of spreads out when you push down on it. See what I mean? And, and scrub in color like this whenever you get your uh, beginning of it done and I may use this some I may not uh, that flat and then I've got a smaller filbert here and all of these are natural hair brushes and uh, anyways we'll be using white like a yellow I, I really don't go by what's on the labels uh, everybody this is yellow okay and uh, this is like a darker red. So you can pick whatever color red you want. It can be lipstick red or whatever kind of fancy name they want to give it. It doesn't matter. It's dark red, okay? And uh, a dark blue and a black and a purple. You'll need that purple. Because you always add purple to your black. Always, always, always. Uh, anyways, let's uh, get this stuff off the canvas and uh, we'll lay some paint out and get started. All right, now that I got all my paint moved out of the way, we can uh, get started. Oh yeah, the other color you'll need is orange. I forgot about orange. Uh, so you'll need seven colors, not six. You'll need seven colors. And, and with those colors, you can make any other colors. You can make brown, you can make green, all kinds of greens, and uh, all kinds of purples and pinks and whatever you can think of, you can you can make with, with those various colors right there. You can make any color that you can think of. So that's why I use those basic colors and I really don't go and buy any any other colors. If uh, if, I, if I need a certain color, I just uh, make my own. Anyway, what we want, I was thinking about doing a seascape, but uh, the attention is gonna be on the sunset itself up top and not really on the water that much. So when we do this bottom water portion, it's not gonna be super hugely, it, well, we're going to do some detail in it and try to match it up with the sky, but we'll, we'll spend less time down here, and most of our time is going to be up here on the sky. So, uh, 
If you want to use some masking tape to do a waterline, you can. I usually do just to uh, So we want to go something like this and just real kind of easy put it down because you're going to lift this back up and, and, and paint the bottom. You're not, you're, uh, this is just a guide to do your first blend. That's all that's for. And then you'll pull it up and then brush in the bottom with the paint that's left on the brush. Uh, so first thing you have to do is decide where you want your sun to be at or where your light's coming from. And, uh, on that last sunset, I did it on this side. So let's go over about, about right here. We'll say the sun's right here. And I'm using a, a yellow colored pencil and uh, because sunset's yellow and you know you can always work over the top of that. I don't like using a dark pencil because then you have to paint over that and that dark color tends to bleed through the paint. And you don't want that. You don't want some lines in there that that you drew out you, you want to do it in a light color where it'll it'll fade in with the paint so since you got a sun right there let me come around to this side since your sun is right here what we want to do is we want to kind of make a triangle like this okay and then that's going to be a yellow line right there that you're going to lay and then you can kind of do another one here and then one here and one over there like that and we'll we'll do white first and then we're going to do yellow and then orange and we, you work your way up through the paints that way so I know you really can't see that uh, very well but I can I can see it pretty decently so you want to start off with your white and just uh, kind of follow this line like this. See, you make some lines in here. Uh oh, got a chunk. And uh, just like that. And you want to kind of curve them a little bit because clouds do funny things. And wherever you drew a yellow line, you want to make sure you get some of that white in there. You don't want a bunch of it, just a little bit. And uh, when you come to this yellow, you want to go off to the side and then underneath it underneath the yellow on each side just like that you'll make sure that that yellow stays in line with that white and then you want to work your way back to the sun with a triangular shape just like that and you do that with each one just like this and remember you want to kind of fade it like that and, and it'll, it'll you're going to end up making this a bright point. You'll see how, how it works out. I'll explain that in a little while when we get to it. But for now, this is about a color stack. This is basically what you're doing, just marking the canvas up. And maybe a little bit right there. And now when you get this orange, you want to go on top of the white line, just like this, and then you want to kind of go back and forth around this yellow. Don't go back inside of it, just on the outside of it, just like that. When you get over to these blank spots, you can kind of fill in a little bit here and there, but uh, you want to stay on the top of that yellow. I mean the top of that white line that you made and you know put a little orange here and there up to the top up to the top again all right when you lay in this red you want to remember you want to come in on these areas that you have like this that are clear that's where you want to come in at so you want to come in low here because see you got this triangular shape coming all the way down to the sun. So you want to kind of put this red in here, just like this, and then fill in these areas. And 
You want more red at the top than you do at the bottom because it's darker. It's a darker color. So you want more of the red up top because it's going it's it'll be brighter towards where the sun is and, and you want it to get darker and darker as it goes away. Just like that. So the next thing we want to do is black. We're not going to use blue yet because I don't want any of the blue liquid mixing with the yellow liquid because your your sunset will turn uh, green and we don't want that. We don't want a green sunset. So you want to sparingly use this black. Don't use a whole ton of it. Like I said, you want most of it at the top. A little spot here and there just to darken it up and change it a little bit. But remember that this is a dark color. I'm not squirting a whole lot of paint, just a little bit. You know, it's barely just a little bit. You want enough to cover the canvas. But you don't want to uh, oversaturate it. You don't want paint dripping off the edges. So you just get this brush, and you can see I'm bending the bristles pretty good now. And you go one way, and you flip the brush over with the color on this side, and come back. And uh, this is going to add color layers. I mean, uh, color stratus layers and they're just like you would see clouds up in the sky during a sunset just like that and you just go back and forth what you don't want to do is do like this and then lift your brush up because it'll leave a mark so you want to go all the way across you want it nice and smooth and even looking and you'll come back over to over the top of this and you're going to scrub in color and uh, change the way it looks a little bit. But when you're sitting here looking at your canvas, you'll see I, right there I've got, that's not color, that's a little bit of that canvas coming through where it didn't quite cover. So you just keep going back and uh, you want to flatten this paint out. You don't want any ridges standing up. You want to flatten it out nice. You don't want a whole bunch of excess paint just laying around. It's going to be a really smooth looking piece when you're done. Let's go ahead and start. And if you get some bare spots in there where you, if you don't like quite enough paint out, you can come back and add just a little bit, a little dot of color and uh, re-drag it back out just like what you're doing right now. Or you can even brush like this if you want to do that, but when you do, remember just do it lightly because you've got a lot of color inside the bristles of this brush right now from dragging it. You've got a lot of excess paint in that brush so you have to be real easy and just kind of come in and fill in these spots where the canvas didn't, didn't get covered then you want to come back in you want to you, you're going to redrag this out and uh, make sure that your paint's nice and smooth and, uh, when, you know, when we're done with this step we're going to let this painting sit up for at least two or three hours or even until the next day if you want to. This is, this is really a step-by-step -step process and it, it takes a little while to do this. It's not something you can just sit down and do all at one time. This is something, it, it's more like a couple of weeks maybe project or some, some, something kind of like that. Because you have to do a little bit and then stop, and then do a little bit and then stop. And you have to let your paint dry because this is wet on dry. But when you're done with this, it's going to be a really, really spectacular piece. And I think you'll be happy with it. And uh, it's the simplest way I know to do 
a really spectacular sunset. Uh, other than the that nebula piece I just finished, uh, I might try to do some clouds for y'all uh, in, in a tutorial and explain how that is done because it's more of a color stacking type of a deal in an abstract way. I guess this is kind of abstract, but uh, I mean the color of it. Uh, initially, it goes down in an abstract way. You can see it kind of streaks itself out. And uh, okay, then you pull this tape up. And with all this extra paint that you got in your brush, you're gonna brush that bottom out. And what that does is it sets a color background for your water. You just kind of want to thin coat it. don't have to be thick and it doesn't have to even cover perfectly. Uh, you can do this more than once. And whenever we finish the sky, you can always tape it coming back into the sky and then uh, redo that, which is probably what we'll do. But we'll be cleaning out our excess paint on our brush down here on the bottom to build up uh, something we can work with. Because right now you see how thin it's going on. And uh, that's just too thin. You can, you can still see the canvas. Uh, the grain of the canvas really, really well, and it wouldn't look good if you just kind of left it and then painted something over the top of that. So it's going to be a multi-layer thing. And uh, so you want to let this set up for about, like I said, about two or three hours. And then uh, you can come back and start on the other stuff that we're going to do. <coughs> or you can let it sit till the next day or even a few days or a week if, you know, you just take your time with it and enjoy it. And uh, we'll be back with the next step. Okay, for this step, you want to look at the way your color laid out and where your brightest spots are. And I intended for the sun to be over here, but it's okay. It looks like it's going to be over this way just because my brightest spots are right there, right there. And just about straight through here is where my brightest spots are and down here on the bottom. That one's kind of brighter, but... We'll go ahead and, and, and say our sun is coming from right up in here somewhere. So, uh, you know, it's just the way the paint came out. And uh, it's, it's really no big deal. Yours isn't going to come out exactly like this. But whenever you first drag it out and you let it dry, what you want to do is when you come back for this, for this step, you want to uh, look at where the brightest, brightest spots are. And... Uh, you want to go with that so if these were all set just a little bit like that then you could kind of figure out where the center was between those and come straight down and then that was where your sunlight would be coming from but on this one it would be right up in here just about right there so we'll come down and our, our sunlight will be right here and uh, you could even use something to mark that if you want to something like that and that way it'll give you a general guideline of you know where it is you want to start at and uh, I'm gonna start at the top of the canvas and work my way down this is the yellow paint remember it can be any color yellow you want uh, I, I just use basic colors and kind of go with it from there and uh, you want to come in where this this brightest spot is and you want to th this is the uh, the medium size filbert it's a number eight filbert and a, uh, a natural hairbrush and uh, you start at that brightest point and work your way out you don't want a lot of paint in the brush see see if, if, if I touch touch it it barely comes off on my finger so you have to kind of scrub it whenever you drag some paint in there you want to kind of tap it like this and it pushes the paint up inside the bristle and uh, as you scrub it it'll let the paint go it won't let it all go at one time. It's not sitting on the outside of the brush. It's inside the brush. So whenever you uh, 
scrub with paint that's how you want to do it you want you want your paint up inside the bristles like that it's really really important to do that and you just kind of come along and work your way out each way and uh, as you work this is gonna change just like an actual sunset just like you were sitting there watching that's why I, I, I love watching somebody do artwork in a sunset with a that where it's a time lapse because it looks like the sunset is actually changing right in front of your face and I think that's pretty cool has a pretty good effect anyways you, you want to go sideways with it on this one instead of because these these brushes they're flat one way and they're wide the other way so whenever you're you want to see where it's flat this way whenever you're trying to scrub in a bright spot like this because I want a fine edge on top on the top right there where I, where I did those now if you just want to brighten something up I just want to brighten this up a little bit I don't want it fine detail like that was so what you do is you turn your brush to where it would look flat up and down this way and wide side to side and you just kind of brush it in just like this in a random pattern remember to balance your light from side to side you can go up and down and brush it in wherever you want to just like this but just remember your sun's right here and you want to balance this light from side to side you want maybe just just barely a little more light on this side just in the way that that works and since you already have a dark line right here what you want to do is you want to go ahead and come in right there and make a fine line and when you scrub easy back and forth like that it's going to push paint out of the bristles and make a a detail line right there on the very top edge of that brush that's what that filbert will do uh, whenever you use it in this manner and just kind of give it that little wiggle action side by side right there where that dark and light meet and it'll give you that defining edge just like that and uh, we, we also use the script liner for that sometimes to put a line on top but uh, for this purpose I want to use the filbert and see where other one I had it up and down like this to where this one is more at an angle and it pushes that paint to the tip of the brush and it, you just wiggle it and keep it on the canvas don't 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 lift it up and get easier and easier with your brush pressure as you work out to the side and it'll get it, it'll it'll fade off just like that You just want to kind of ease it and then fade it off just like that and this will give you the basic shape of a few clouds a few main clouds you the, the, these will be your main ones you of course you'll have some uh we're, we're going to do some other work and do all kind of crazy stuff in there and make it look really nice. And uh, like I said, this painting is going to take a while. So it, it, it might even be a four or five hour video. Who knows? However long it takes. I'm really not worried about it. The length of the video because somebody might want to follow along if you decide to follow along and, and do your own painting which is what I'm, I'm doing this particular tutorial for people that want to learn how to do this or somebody that's just interested in how it works you know you, you don't necessarily have to do the painting but if you are interested in just how it works and what it is that I've learned now I've never had an art lesson in my life 
Uh, I'm a poor person. <laughs> I, I don't make a whole lot of money. I work at a factory. And I, I come home beat down and tired. Like a lot of people that are on their feet all day long. So if you're one of those people that's on your feet all the time, I completely understand because I do it too. And then I come home and make these art videos because uh, I just really enjoy sharing my work. And I enjoy all the nice comments people leave and, you know, it's just really cool. Sometimes you'll get a comment that ain't that nice. And uh, that's okay. You know, you can't please everybody. Some people are going to like your videos and some people are going to say, man, you suck. That's just the way it is. Just kind of, kind of roll with the punches. Cause you're gonna get a lot of punches one way or the other. Anyways, uh, you can do all kind of random patterns in here, and uh, start to set it up for other stuff that you're gonna end up doing. Now I've got some canvas over here that's still showing through. See it right there, that kind of whitish looking color? That's where the canvas was still showing. I didn't quite get it covered whenever I first did it. So you can just come in here and scrub in some color. Just like that. And you can change the way this looks in all kind of ways. Uh, now this is more of a general use brush for me. I do use it for some things like popping out that line. But uh, sometimes you can go to this smaller filbert and uh, you can do some really neat stuff with it. Now this is a really thin brush and it's pretty new. I haven't used it but a few times. So it hasn't flared out yet. Uh, but it has a much finer edge trying to figure out how I want to hold this brush. But it's got a much finer edge. Whoops, my brush touched the camera. You see that folks? Without, that was an accident. I didn't do that on purpose. You always have to let the brush touch the canvas on accident and never on purpose because like Bob Ross said, it's a happy accident. It's not a it's not something to necessarily be taken seriously. Just want to kind of have fun with it because this is your relaxation time after work. You can use this brush for fine scrubbing, see like this. You can scrub with it, just like that, and it'll lighten an area up for you. Remember, you're using just a little bit of paint at a time, not a lot. And uh, let me see, we want to graduate the colors. You start with that yellow, and then move up to orange. Go back to your other filbert. And right below where you were scrubbing with your other filbert, you want to keep it like that, not like this, like this. And you want to kind of scrub side to side. Up under there, and it'll give you a fade out. Now, I would say that this painting would be like a slightly more advanced painting. Uh, it's not something you would necessarily want to do your first time, but you could. Uh, you could do this your first time and it wouldn't hurt anything. Instead of going out and buying, you know, 25 cheap canvases and uh, practicing on a bunch of simple art, you can go ahead and buy one nice canvas and then start something like this and uh, 
come out with something nice it just takes longer you know and, and like I said instead of doing 25 really really simple pieces so that you can learn how to paint you can do this in, in really simple technique and uh, get yourself a nice canvas go to a, a go to somewhere that's either got it already made uh, or you can go to uh, maybe one of your local, find one of your uh, local people that actually, that, like a frame builder. Call a local frame builder and say, look, I would like for you to make me a canvas. And for a lot of times, they'll charge you about the same, uh, same price or maybe even less than what you can buy one of these pre-manufactured canvases for. And you help support a local family. send their kids to school and give them a good education. You keep your money in the community where it belongs instead of in corporate America's pocket. Which they're going to get some of that from, you know, canvas and materials or whatever, but the actual work that's performed by a person that owns their own business, I'm not talking about a million dollar business, I'm talking about somebody that just trying to make a living for their family and they really didn't want to work for corporate America so they started their own business this is the kind of people we want to support because these are the people that uh, make lives better and because a lot of those type of people uh, donate actually more to charity than any other group in the nation these are the people that actually take care of us. It's not Mr. Deep Pockets. They tend to sit on their cash and not share it with anybody. So, But that's just the way that works. There are some rich people out there in the world that try to actually help, but not me. All right. To finish this step off, I'm going to come in and start doing some highlighting with my script liner. And uh, you want to start right in the middle above your sun there, where your sun would be. And just kind of highlight this and let it fade out as it, as it goes away. You want your brightest highlight in the center above it. Just like that. And don't worry about what, what I'm doing right now is I'm moving it up and down like a sewing needle but real fast and just kind of barely touching the canvas with the, with the tip of the brush. And uh, the paint really comes off in an abstract. You're not just setting it down and dragging it because that makes a clean line. We don't want a clean line. That's not what we want. We want uh, variation in the line. So it looks like the top of a cloud moving around or something you got a pretty big canvas here to work with and this is just one style uh, I'm gonna end up doing sunsets in several different styles and tutorials for everybody this is just one but uh, if there's anybody out there watching that has actually had art lessons and classes and stuff if you got any tips for me I sure would appreciate it you can use all the help I can get we all can I guess in our own ways but I'll share here with, with y'all what, what it is that I know and I guess that's the whole point of making this video really share with you what it is I know. Now you highlight along the top portion of this bright spot and then you got the dark above it, above each one. See, it's darker, darker, it's darker, and that's where you want to place your highlight. You want the dark above and the bright below. And it'll make it, the sun look like it's casting light out into the sky. 
and uh, you don't have to worry about highlighting every little bitty thing because you're going to come back and do more and more highlighting as you go. You want to kind of be sporadic with it here and there on the clouds that are not your main clouds, but they are there. So you want to kind of be, just kind of play around with it. Maybe do a little here and a little there where you think a little bright spot might be. And uh, it'll add interest and character to your work. And it gives it more of a... Uh, an impressionistic feel when you do it like this because it's so random and abstract and, and the way that it comes out but it, it's got purpose behind it and I, I'm, I'm doing a color stack so just keep following along and uh, doing the same type of steps and uh, you'll be able to come up with something too. Something real similar. It won't be just like this one, but it'll be very similar. And uh, you, you could do these all day long. It's a very good, I would say this was a medium hard hardness type of work. Uh, just really depends on how, how much detail you want to get into it. But uh, anyways, I'm going to let this dry. And uh, I'm going to let this dry until tomorrow. And then I'm gonna, I'll am i come back and we'll work on it for about another 15 or 20 minutes. And then we'll just keep on going like that. And like I said, you do little baby steps like that. And before you know it, you got you a beautiful piece of work. All right. Now we're going to begin the next step. And uh, we want to use our our uh, regular two inch house painting brush that you can get cheap just about anywhere. Uh, I think this one was about four or five dollars. And you want just barely a little bit of water in there in your bristles. Not not much. I mean you, you don't want any moisture uh, coming off on your hand. But you want the bristles just barely damp. Just barely, barely damp. Oops, get a little water. Be all right and just rub it in. But we're going to put in some blue. You just have to be real careful when you're using this blue because you don't want to hit any of these yellow areas. You want to kind of come in the areas like up in here. And what that blue is going to do, and, and we're going to mix some red over the top of it too. And you'll get some purples in there, some really nice purples. And, uh, you want barely just get a little edge on the edge of your brush, just like this, to where there's none anywhere else. And just push it in there real good like this. I mean, I want that paint down in them bristles. Just like that, only on one side, but they're down inside the bristles. So I can set this brush down just like that. See? It doesn't leave no paint. See that? No paint. Uh, so this is about pressure. The harder you push, the more paint it's going to let down, and you just barely want to touch it. Just like this, and you want to hear this sound. You hear that sound? That's what you want to hear. Just barely touch it. And uh, that way you can use that fine edge of that brush and pop blue in there. And that blue, you're not really going to notice it at first. But if you do this multiple times in different areas and stack the color up, then uh, in different light lighting situations, it'll change color. Sometimes it'll look black uh, if it's really dark in a room. And uh, if it's really bright in a room, you'll be able to see some of this blue come out. People are going to say, wow, man, where'd you get that? And you tell them that you made it. No way, man, you didn't make that. Yes, I did. Oh, no, yes, I did. Like I said, I got yellow right up in here, so I don't want to go in there with it. With this blue. I 
remember you got barely a little bit of paint so it doesn't go very far but uh, you can get it in there like that and like I said as you work this canvas you're gonna get purples all kind of crazy colors off in there and it'll turn into a really pretty painting I'm gonna come back with I'm gonna rinse this brush out and then sling it out real good so I have the same amount of moisture content as I did with the blue and then I'm gonna come over all of this with some red and your paint is gonna get darker as it sits up and then when we come back for the next step we'll brighten it back up again and uh, you'll start getting any of these fine little striation lines that don't look quite right they'll start coming out of the painting and uh, it'll start giving it a really smooth look and your paint will start to have a really really nice sheen to it and it'll look like a really nice piece of art that way like I said all it takes is just a little bit of time you can do this Get some more blue in here at the top. I'm really liking the way that's looking. And people will always wonder how in the world you snuck that blue in there without turning it green. And you ain't got to tell them the secret if you don't want to. You can kind of keep it to yourself and just smile and say, I'm just smart. And they never have to know how you did it. All right. <coughs> we need to move this out of the way. Go rinse your brush off real, real good. <coughs> oh, wait. I forgot I gotta lay the red down before I before I do my color blend. You've gotta lay red down because we're gonna blend the whole thing and we don't want a blue going into the yellow. So you've got to change the blue to a different color. Slightly different color. You want this red on top. See, as you hit the edge of that blue right there, see how it turned purple? Now the brush has got a little bit more water in there than I want. It'll come out as I work this, though. So it's okay. Just remember, don't hit any of those yellow areas, just the orange ones. Just the orange areas. put this blue at and come in over the top of it with this red. You don't want to completely cover it and hide it. Okay, now we're going to blend it out. <clears throat> Sling your brush out as hard as you can. Remember you want just a tiny, tiny amount of paint. And you barely want this to touch the canvas, people. Just barely. Because what you want to do is just smooth the paint out. You don't want to pick it up in the brush. You don't want any, the, the smallest amount of color working your way up into the bristles. You, like I said, you're just smoothing it out. And it'll even some of those lines out that you're seeing and kind of help blend it together some. And as this painting sits, 
these paints will work together just by sitting on the wall. Uh, over time, it'll it'll change color on you. This will end up changing color on you. I'm gonna flip it back over to the orange and the yellow because I want to come in with some yellow. And we're going to go to our, our number zero round, which is a natural hair bristle. It's kind of short, and you see it kind of puffs out because I've been kind of pouncing on it. But uh, it's kind of stiff, so it's good for scrubbing color. And you want to go up to where the top of your brightest point is and kind of work your way back down a little bit. Kind of, you don't want a hard line in there. Just kind of work it and fade it out so it's brighter at the top point. And you're going to end up brightening this up several times. This isn't going to be the first coat. And if you get a little bit of shape in there like that, then that's fine. Uh, I think it actually looks kind of nice like that. Put that little bit of shape coming down. It doesn't look so institutional that way. You really want to connect that color with that line. I want to work my way just a little bit further this way, but not too much. Okay, on these, you want to do the same thing. You want to keep the bright point up and the and the, I mean the dark point on this side and the, and the bright point on the bottom. So you just come in here like this and kind of tap around. And it, like I said, there's so many different ways to make clouds, everybody, that, you know, this is just one. This is just one way. Uh, I really enjoy this particular style. It looks pretty nice. Uh, it's not quite as dramatic as some other work that you may see. Remember, you just kind of fade this out as you go over to each side. like that kind of brighten that up and you're going to hit this yellow just about every single time before you hang it back up so always remember that you, I, I normally start with the lightest color for each step and then work my way to the darkest but uh in this particular style I always end up with the brightest color last well yeah, that's a mess that's a mess do something with that. What you do is if you if you screw up like that, you have to kind of work with it and make it like a cloud. I had too much paint in my brush that time and it just mushed it everywhere. 
that's okay because when that paint's thicker like that it'll make one cloud look closer and one cloud look further away so it's okay this will be a foreground cloud and just keep working along these lines brighten these areas up and acrylics always dry darker than what it is that you put them down almost always and uh, so expect for your paint painting to become darker as you work it Ooh, I got that blue on the bottom there don't want If you're using two sides of a palette like I'm doing and you get one color on one side and one color on the other side, don't put it down on the canvas. <laughs> you'll, you'll make a mistake and then you'll really want to kick yourself. Because then you just about have to paint the canvas black and purple and then start all over again. And I've had to do that before. Boy, that's a pain in the butt. It's really disappointing when that happens. So you just got to pay attention to what you're doing. Remember, this is your relaxation time and your fun time. Because you're trying to make something nice, so you want to kind of pay attention to what it is that you're doing as you're working, because it does take a long time to do this. Ain't no sense in really messing it up. You want to make a make a nice picture, and have it come out really well. down here now see I'm not dragging this brush I'm kind of working the brush up and down like a sewing needle same as I uh, do my script liner and kind of rotate the brush a little bit kind of spin it around make all kind of interesting shapes with it if you see a hard line that you don't like you can use this to erase it do something kind of like that and uh, I'll rinse that out in a minute then we want to come back in with our medium size filbert again got some of these bright areas and just kind of do a random little thing just like this remember this is gonna dry darker so all you're really doing is you're gonna add color variation that's all it's gonna do and it'll help brighten the painting up You're putting this on real thin and barely touching the canvas. Just barely a little pressure. You can kind of do like this. And it'll give striation into your work. And a pattern, it, it, it'll add a, like a patterned type effect. Give you some brighter areas and lighter areas just like you would see in a real sunset so you just don't have like a, a, a dark spot and then a light spot Keep working like that. All the way across. Filling in spots.
I really love doing sunsets like this because it just something about a sunset and a sunrise I've always enjoyed it's like the start of the end of a day start of something old at the end of something old and the beginning of something new I guess is why I like it so much Anyway, you just pop these color in there. Just keep working it. And this is what really takes so long is all this detail work, all this scrubbing. But when you're done, it's really worth it. You get a really good effect. Just kind of like do a zigzag type of deal. It's like this. When you get this color scrub in here, it's really going to add form to your painting. And uh, it looks really super off the chain. I'm not sure what I really want to do with the bottom yet. I haven't really quite made up my mind. I was wanting to do a seascape. But, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. Still got a ways to go on the sky a little bit. Anyway, we're going to stop here and let this dry, and uh, then we'll go to the next step. So we need to let this sit for at least an hour, and then we'll come back and do some more. <coughs> so next, you just want to lay some red out, just a little bit, not a whole lot. You're not going to use a ton of it. And you go back to your two-inch brush. You know, you just barely put some paint on the edge, just like you did before, beat it down real good in there. And, uh, come back and lay some red over the top of this. Just in certain spots. And you just kind of keep working the canvas like this until you are uh, more or less happy with what it is that you got. Nice 
nice color off in there. Just like that. I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'd like some light up in there. Just right there like that. Yeah, give it a nice deep hue. Alright. You want to lay out some white next. And some yellow. You're going to mix these two together and use them for highlights. But you only want about half as much white as you got yellow, so and you mix those together. All you really want to do is brighten it up just a little bit. So that's just a couple of shades brighter than uh, the rest of the yellow that you got on there. And you don't want it everywhere. I mean, you don't want to do every single line, but you want to hit some highlighting in different areas. Just like this. So you just kind of pop a line in there. You don't want to do every single cloud. And like I said, you don't want to do all of it. Just in various spots. And now we're fixing to tape that bottom off down there and start on our water line. First, we've got to lay a little bitty sun somewhere down there. We'll probably end up coming back in and doing a little bit more highlighting in the sky, too, as we work. Uh, kind of go back and forth between the water and the sky, depending on how, how this paint settles. And like I remember, like I said, it, it's in multiple layers, so... Come in and kind of highlight some of these where you have that color variation in there. Just like this. Okay, we're fixing to take this bottom off. down for a second. I'm going to come in there with our tape and uh, we got good smooth paint to about right here. Down there, it's, remember we all we did was uh, just that single coat. I'm going to come across. Lay it down like this. You're going to lay in the sun. I'm thinking about right here, right up in there, right there. Lay a little small one. I don't want a real big one on this piece. Just a little small sun. That way you don't have to 
fight with the roundness of it. You're only doing like a little small portion of it, so it's fine. All you really need is something like that, just in a general round shape. Just like that. You bring your tape up and when, when we're going to set this up and let that dry so that we can tape back over the top of the sun going this way and then start working on the water. So that'll be where our sun's going to be located. And uh, now I'm going to lay some blackout. Barely a little bit, so we don't need much, and just a little purple. And uh, mix these together. Just barely get some on the brush, each color, and just kind of tap them together, just like that. Work that paint up into them bristles good. And you want to come in a little area like this on the on, on the top of the bright spot. Just kind of barely darken that in a little bit here and there. Add a little bit of depth. It'll uh, make your clouds stand out, stand out in the sky too. When you do this, you don't want to get your paint too thick, like I just did. Now that's kind of dark. Take your finger and rub like that. You don't want it that dark and just follow that edge like that. If you happen to put too much paint down, you can do it like this and uh, it'll come out pretty decent. You don't want to go up all the way up to the tip. Just kind of paint still a little bit thick in that brush. Rub that down. Follow that edge, just like that. Might barely get just a little bit more paint. And uh, I'm just trying to add a little bit of definition. A little bit of depth and detail in there. Kind of work this brush back and forth like that. Uh, I don't want to do that one. I want to leave it like it is. I'm come up here and hit this because it gets darker up in this top of the sky. There we go. Kind of like that. All right. here I want to kind of darken up and we're going to let this dry and uh, come back and start working on our water wait about like that and uh, always remember to, to rinse your brushes out when you're done